All right, we'll continue with chapter one, section 1.1, and day two. And we'll be looking at two-way tables and their marginal distributions. So when a data set involves two categorical variables, two categorical variables, we begin by examining the counts or percents in various categories for one of the variables. A two-way table describes two categorical variables, organizing counts according to a row variable and a column variable. Again, rows will go this way, columns will go this way. So below here we do have a two-way table about young adults uh, by gender and chance of getting rich. So I want to know what are the variables described by this two-way table? Well, here are our variables. Are they almost no chance, some chance, but probably not a 50-50 chance, etc., etc. Okay, so the <coughs> two-way table here uh, deals with females and males and the counts in each of those different categories. Okay, so how many young adults were totally surveyed? Well, that's where we would look for that number right there in that bottom right corner. That's kind of our grand total. That's the total number of females plus males. Or if we were to go this way too and add up all of these, uh, that would give us our total too. Those are all the uh, individual totals for each of the different variables. It should add up to that same amount. The marginal distributions of one of the categorical variables in a two-way table of counts is the distribution of values of that variable among all individuals described by the table. So we'll take a look at that here. Um, we can note again that percents are often more informative than counts. We, we tend to like the percents a lot better uh, than the counts. So especially when comparing groups of different sizes, because uh, then we've got a kind of a standard uh, rather than comparing a number, because numbers could just uh, themselves be distorted, um, where the percentages would give you a little bit more of a comparative reflection on the on the categories. So how do we examine a marginal distribution? Well, number one, use the data in the table to calculate the marginal distribution in percents of the row or column totals. And we'll show you that here. And then make a graph to display the marginal distribution. So um, in examining a marginal distribution of that previous table that we had, that two-way table of, of getting rich, um, what we can do is we can look at the different percents. <coughs> Excuse me. Our marginal distributions here in terms of counts uh, over here would be these totals right here. That's the marginal distribution of almost no chance. This is the marginal distribution of some chance but probably not, etc., etc., etc. So that's a marginal distribution of each of these different variables uh, in that category of the chance of getting rich. Okay. These are also marginal distributions. These are the marginal distributions of females. It's the marginal distribution of the males. And again, here we'd have that grand total. Though we can look at those as percents because we kind of look at these numbers and say, you know, um, you know, we certainly see uh, larger numbers uh, down here, but you know, somehow uh, that may uh, not be as um, Detail is what we can look at with percents. Okay, so in the percents, all we're going to do is just take again this. If we want to figure out uh, the percent of almost no chance, well, we take the total no chance and divide it by uh, its grand total to get that four percent, and continue to do that same thing down the t down the uh, rest of that column. The seven twelve out of the four thousand eight twenty six. Well, that's fourteen point eight percent, etc., etc. Okay, so these would be, again, marginal distributions um, on the outside, either in counts or we would do these in percents. Percents are a little easier than to make the graphs uh, because then we can say here's that 4% right here, here's that 14.8%, and then we get a really quick picture uh, uh, of the data here. Uh, and not have to worry about these counts on the side. Though there's nothing wrong with doing counts on the side, it's just more common that we would use percents. 
we now look at conditional uh, distributions. Okay, and a conditional distribution of a variable describes the values of that variable among among individuals who have a specific value of another variable. So it's kind of the key words here is looking for that word among when we examine our conditional or compare our conditional distributions. So the first thing we're going to do is select the row or columns of interest. Then use the data in the table to calculate the conditional distribution in percents of the rows or columns. And it's going to be important which way to know which way to go. And we'll talk about that here in a sec. So and then we'll make a graph of the display the, the different conditional distributions. Uh, the best one to do is either a side-by-side -side bar graph, uh, probably the most common side-by-side -side bar graph, or we also have what's called a segmented uh, bar graph, or this is sometimes sometimes called a stacked. Uh, bar graph. And we'll take a look at that on this next slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the conditional distributions of opinion amongst males. Okay, so we're going to look at opinion among males. Sometimes this another word they'll use here instead of among uh, is the word given. So we're going to look at the opinion given males. Well that's kind of important because that tells us how we're going to read this table. So when I see this word among males or given males, what we're going to do is we're going to look at that category and read down this way. So we're going to look for those different opinions amongst the males. And uh, look at the conditional distributions. Conditional distributions will now be inside this two-way table. I mean, here's our, uh, our two-way table right here. Whoops. Uh, is right here. Uh, we're ignoring the marginal distributions out here. Okay. So our conditional distributions are always on the inside uh, of our two-way table. So looking at this table, I want to do the conditional distributions of opinion amongst males. So I will, for this first category, or for this first variable, sorry, uh, we'd be looking at 98 out of the 2,459, 286 out of the 2,459 etc etc as we go down through this table. We can do the same thing for the females. You know, be the 96 out of the 2367, the 426 out of the 2367 to get the various percentages here. Now this is a segmented bar graph or a stacked bar graph and just taking each of these individual percentages, the 4% and then stacking another 11.6 on this so this would get up to about 15.6% right there and keep stacking these different percentages and that 29.3 percent is from here to here but as we keep stacking this up it should come up to a total of hundred percent so we can kind of do a little side-by-side -side comparison and see where uh, there might be some differences between the two uh, different populations so can we say there's an association between gender and opinion in the population of young adults well you know that's Gonna be, we'll talk about how we can do this a little more mathematically, uh, but we're looking at right now saying that it looks like it's pretty much the same. There might be just a little bit larger group here, the males here, uh, a little bit larger group of females right here. Um, and, uh, you know, say that there might be an association that, um, you know, there is uh, males, that more males that believe they have a good chance um, than females, uh, but to make this determination, it requires formal inference, which we'll talk about in the second semester, and as it says in a few more chapters. So one thing we'll always caution you about is even if you have a strong association, if you see that there is something that was really, really associated between the two uh, different variables, it can be influenced by other lurking variables in the background. You know, there might be something else that might explain this better. So always beware of lurking variables. Okay, and here's everything we should have learned. As we talked about in the beginning, we should be able to display data with a bar graph, make graphs, make some graphs of categorical data deceptive. What makes those deceptive? So we're talking about, uh, you know, making make sure you make the bar is equal. Um, you know, make sure you start at zero. Calculating and displaying margin distributions, you should know how to do that. We, uh, those are on the outside of the two-way tables. Um, and so margin distributions are on the outside. 
sorry for the sloppy writing there. Um, calculate and display conditional distributions. Those are on the inside of a two-way table. And then be able to describe association between two categorical variables. Okay. Well, at this point, you should be able to do the next group of problems um, from day three, numbers 19, 21, 23, 25, and 27 30 through 32. All right, we'll see you later in section two.